Hey everybody, Radamant here for a quick little tutorial about Solar Logic. Um, so Solar Logic is a way to automate your solar panels in order for the solar panels to point at the sun um, as efficiently as possible, um, which is much better than you can do by hand and it frees up your hands so that you can do other bigger tasks. So in this little guide, I'm going to be setting up three solar panels. Uh, but this is applicable to however many that you want. So if you only want one panel or you want uh, hundreds, uh, this guide will still be pretty useful. Uh, so first things first, you need solar panels and glass. The glass is made by silicon and the solar panels are made on the electronics printer. Um, set up your panels and then I point the power to the east and then I rotate them 90 degrees. Um, it doesn't really matter which way your power is facing. You can always rotate your panels to have them be correct. It's not a big deal. All right, next up, I'm going to set up a little uh, power controller for our solar panels. And I'm going to plop a battery in there. This battery, in fact, I'll uh, demo it that we have a battery that is dead. It doesn't need to be full. Uh, it can be a dead battery. It can be a full battery. And let's turn the APC on. So the next thing we're going to do is to wire this all up so that the solar panels that we have so far will feed into the APC. And yes, I'm doing this in creative space, uh, but this guide can be used obviously for when you're planet side as well, uh, whether it's the moon or Mars, etc. So we'll set up the power so that the power is connected to all these solar panels and then they feed to the APC. So hypothetically, when these solar panels are pointing to the sun, which I'll manually angle them for now, uh, they will then feed this APC power. So the next step is to, whoa, I fell through a hole, is to take a construction sensor, um, and I like to plop it in the middle of the frame uh, that the first panel is on. Uh, maybe once to the right, like that. And this daylight sensor needs to face east where the sunrise is. Uh, that part is a little important. Um, next up, I will put one logic uh, input output with the construction option of one of three, which is a logic reader. The power needs to be pointing upwards. Plop that down. Next, plop two math units with the power facing upwards. And then lastly, Put a batch writer, which is construction option three of three. Use your mouse wheel to change them. Um, oh, I put a logic reader down. Let's put a batch writer down with the power also phasing upwards. Uh, now our next task is to then plop two more little memories here. And I like to put them like this so that all of our logic system is all ducks in a row. Uh, now the task is to wire up all of the data, not power, but data. Keep, I like to keep my data and power separate. Uh, the reason for it is, uh, if they, if you combine data and power, it can actually be pretty difficult to set up your logic, uh, because there will be a lot of things on the network. Um, so I highly suggest separating data and power if you can, if you can't, you know, obviously it's it's fine. So now, as you can see, the data from the memory, uh, both memories, the daylight sensor, and all of these um, chips, let's call them, are all connected. Power the power, on the other hand, is on the top here. We're going to run, as I said, power separately. So I'm going to lay the cabling out for separate power. And the power is going to originate from this APC. And as you can see, this APC has a little bit of power because the sun is starting to rise on these solar panels. So let's just finish off the power here. And then the last thing is the output of the batch writer needs to then feed to the input or the data um, of your solar panels. And there is no limitation on how many solar panels the batch writer can control. They can control one or uh, a thousand. 
I wouldn't suggest making a thousand objects. That's probably too many for this game to handle, but if you really wanted a massive solar grid, you could do it. So let's connect these in. And our wiring is done. Now the wiring for this took about 75 cables. Um, so that's Zero a fair G. bit of copper, plus the circuits and all that are also pretty expensive. But now we're done with that. The next thing I suggest, you don't need to, but I suggest doing is using your labeler to name all the objects on this grid. So I'm going to call this memory mem15, this memory mem1.5, this logic reader reader solar, this math unit math sub15, which is subtract15, this math unit math div1.5, which is divide 1.5, and this batch writer batch, if I could spell it, solar. So now everything is named so that we can identify it. So when you take out your screwdriver here, make sure that your memory is set to 15, and this memory is set to 1.5. And remember, you can hold left alt for smaller increments. This uh, reader will take the daylight sensor, which we didn't change the name of, as its input, and the variable of that input will be the solar angle. So when we turn this on, this is reading 4 degrees, this is reading 4 degrees, roughly speaking. Um, it averages, or it rounds, I should say. Uh, so this math unit is going to take the solar, the reader solar and subtract 15 from it. So in point 1 will be reader solar. In point 2 will be memory 15. And we're going to subtract so let's see if that makes sense. About 4 minus 15 is negative 10, so that works. Now this math unit is going to divide it by 1.5. So it's going to take this number, which is uh, calculated from the solar reader and subtracted 15 from, and divide by 1.5. So this input will be math sub 15. This input will be memory 1.5, and we're going to divide. Turn that on. And then this last batch reader, or writer, I should say, is going to take the math div 1.5 as input. And as output, output to the solar panels, vertical angle. And we flick that on. Um, I left out one step in this. If you're familiar with the guide, that step isn't necessary to get um, proper solar tracking and power. And that is why I left it out. So let's logic test this. The solar angle is 22 degrees, which seems about right, right? It's about 22 degrees up on the horizon. The reader is reading now 24 degrees. This is subtracting 15 from it, so 25 minus 15 is 10. Divided by 1.5 is 0.75, and then that reads out as an angle. So if we look at our solar panels, as you can see, they're running at about 490 which is um, pretty uh, pretty efficient. Um, and that was a really cheap and easy logic to do. And the reason we uh, do it is because the sun obviously uh, goes up in a 180 degree arc, right? From, from dawn to dusk. But the solar panels only go from zero to 100, not uh, zero to 180. So it's sort of a way to convert uh, solar angle to solar panel angle, uh, which is the purpose of the solar logic. And uh, if we look over here, as you can see, this battery is nice and full now. It was empty uh, at the start. I can even swap it for my suit battery. Um, if you have any questions about this, I'll be putting in a detailed uh, guide about this. I didn't write the guide myself. I'm just using it. Uh, the authors are Woody, Corvus, BK, GK, Enfant, Cool, and Bash. Uh, I'm sorry if I skewered your names, but they came up with this really, really simple, quick, and efficient way to track the sun. Uh, because power is your first barrier to survival, this is one of the first things you should do in almost every base. And I hope this guide has helped you. Um, just some additional tips. These small red cables can only hold up to 10 solar panels worth of power. They can only hold up to 5 kilowatts, which is 
uh, 10 panels. Each panel generates about 0.5 kilowatts or 500 watts. Um, so if you want a solar grid of more than 10 panels, uh, you have to have some considerations either to keep um, any additional panel over 10 on a separate grid and group them in groups of 10 or use these heavy cables. But these heavy cables are more expensive and require gold to make. These heavy cables can support up to 100 solar panels. If your base requires more power than 100 solar panels, um, you probably didn't need this guide. Uh, some other tips. Um, elevate your solar panels because it, objects that are in front of the solar panels will make the solar panels less efficient. So I like to put the solar panels up on um, iron frames or steel frames above the bases, on the roofs of the bases. Uh, don't put it on the roof of the base if you have a hydroponic farm because your plants also need direct sunlight. Don't put objects uh, around, in front, behind uh, to block the sun of these solar panels. And if you want additional solar panels, uh, make sure your additional solar panels additionally do not block the solar panels you already have set up. You might as well get every last drop of power out of your panels as you can. Um, the batch writer data can expand to as many panels as you want. So if you want this this uh, little cable network that has the solar angle data, you can connect this to as many panels as you want. It, not 10. You're not limited to 10 as long as it's not carrying power. And that's pretty much uh, all I have to say about solar logic. I hope this has helped. Um, and stay tuned for additional little tips. Adios, everyone.